And good evening. I'm Erin Burnett. Out front tonight, the breaking news. No deal. The White House just wrapping up a high stakes meeting with Mexico for the day. So far, no deal to stop the president's threat to slap tariffs on all goods imported to the United States from Mexico. I think Mexico has to step up, and if they don't, tariffs will go on. And if they go high, the companies are going to move back into the United States. That's all. It's very simple. Well, it is very simple. You know, companies aren't just going to move back to the United States. They can't and won't, won't make decisions that quickly, right? They'll wait because this is hundreds of millions of dollars at stake. They'll instead just pass along the tariff in the form of higher prices to Americans for everything from cars to food. Republican Senator John Cornyn lays it out pretty clearly today. Tariffs, on the other hand, would be a massive tax. The U.S. Chamber estimates that Texas alone would face 5.3 $5 billion in increased costs as a result of a 5% tariffs that could take effect as early as Monday. This translates into about $1,000 more on a car. $1,000 more per car. Deutsche Bank says, in fact, it'll be $1,300 a car, and that's just as the tariffs begin. And a new nonpartisan analysis estimates tariffs on Mexico could wipe out more than 400,000 jobs in the United States. 400,000 jobs. Look, that's what happens when tariffs stay on. So here's the facts. The president's not going to risk 400,000 jobs over a patently impossible demand, because let's be clear, he has a clear demand. Tariffs are gonna go on Mexico until illegal immigration via Mexico stops. Here's the tweet from the president of the United States. He tweeted, on June 10th, the United States will impose a 5% tariff on all goods coming into our country from Mexico until such time as the illegal migrants coming through Mexico and into our country stop, all caps. And then he says the tariff will increase, right, all the way up to 25%. So let's be clear, illegal immigrant uh, migrants coming through Mexico to the southern border is not going to stop by June 10th. It's just not going to happen. In fact, the latest numbers show a surge in border crossings. More than 144,000 encountered or arrested in May alone. That is a 30% surge in just one month. The surge in illegal migrants may be why the one Trump inner circle member who supports using tariffs for non-economic warfare is trying to move the goalpost. Here's Peter Navarro with our Jim Shuto earlier today. We believe that these tariffs may not have to go into effect precisely because we have the Mexicans' attention. Oh, so now all we needed was their attention. Well, we already had that. Look, that is not bringing illegal immigration to a stop, right? That's getting their attention. It's a totally different thing than the president said. And that's the fact. The president has to do something to back out of his threat that it has to stop completely by June 10th or else the tariffs go on. Uh, because the, his tweet will be outed as yet another empty threat like these. Mexico is going to have to do something, otherwise I'm closing the border. I'll just close the border. North Korea, best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. Every woman lied when they came forward to hurt my campaign. All of these liars will be sued after the election is over. Those lawsuits did not happen. There has been no fire and fury. Thank God. And regarding the border, Trump said that on March 29th. Seven days later, the border, still open as it is now. But seven days later, Trump went on camera to declare victory. I want to thank the president of Mexico. Uh, he's the first one. He's really been doing the job. He's helping Mexico, too, not only economically and not only because I won't be forced to shut it down or do the tariffs. Deja vu. Pamela Brown is traveling with the president out front live in Limerick, Ireland tonight. So, Pamela, uh, obviously no deal tonight. Now they're saying talks are going to continue tomorrow, but certainly no breakthrough imminent at this time. No breakthrough, Aaron, and the expectation from administration officials is that this first go around, there wouldn't be a deal uh, from this meeting today with the vice president, the secretary of state, the DHS secretary, and Mexico's foreign minister. I'm told by a senior administration official that this was a meeting that lasted 90 minutes at the White House. Officials say that progress was made, and the president tweeted that as well, but that it wasn't enough, and that uh, the foreign minister did put forward some ideas of how to 
stemmed the flow of undocumented migrants, but clearly it wasn't satisfactory to officials. And so they've decided to continue the talks. In fact, Mike Pompeo, the Secretary of State, will be meeting uh, later uh, later on in just a few hours with the foreign minister again in a one-on-one -on -one meeting. And then tomorrow talks will continue. And even Pat Cipollone, the White House counsel, will be meeting with his counterpart. But certainly all of this raises the question of, of what the objective is here, because you're right, the president has stayed firm, saying that, yes, these tariffs will go into effect on Monday, which is right around the corner. The clock is ticking. But then you heard his top trade advisors say, look, we've got Mexico's attention. Maybe something will be worked out. And privately, we're told behind the scenes, White House officials really do think that this could be averted. Officials have been purposefully vague on what the threshold is to prevent the tariffs for this reason, so that it's easy to say, look, we believe that Mexico has done enough or they've offered up enough to prevent the tariffs. But certainly, if it does happen, Aaron, there will be a ripple effect not only to U.S. consumers, but beyond, even here in Ireland, where the president is visiting his golf resort not far from where I am now. It'll have an impact here, too, because there are products that go from Ireland to Mexico back to the U.S. So um, it is something that people are paying close attention to, not just in the U.S., Aaron. All right. Thank you very much, Pamela. And I want to go now to the Democratic Senator Jeff Merkley, who sits on both the Appropriations and Foreign Relations Committees. So, Senator, let me just start with Peter Navarro, right? Uh, he says tariffs may not have to go into effect, right, once we have their attention. But, of course, uh, the president's demand of immigration stopping, he used all caps, right, by June 10th, which is five days from now, um, you know, isn't, isn't going to happen. It's, it's not a possibility. Uh, do you think this was an all an, em an empty threat? Does the president have any intention of following through? Well, I don't think it's an, an empty threat, but it's a very bizarre <laughs> strategy. Uh, let me explain that this is not about tariffs for an economic deal. This is saying we're going to use it as a weapon in foreign policy. Now, Mexico, if they were talking to the U.S., would say, you know, the problems that have created the tremendous flow of refugees are, first, you, Mr. Trump, or President Trump, you have kept saying you're going to seal the border. Every time you do that, the coyotes advertise and there's a surge. It's gone from 30 to 40,000 a month now to 150,000 a month because of you, Mr. President. So he's causing it. And they'd also say, and by the way, the instability in Central America, this is coming from the dollars that come from the American drug trade. So if Americans, if you quit buying drugs from Central America, we won't have this problem. And if you quit shipping guns to Central America, allowing them to be smuggled out of the U.S., we won't have this problem. In other words, that would be the Mexican side of, of, of this. Uh, and so using tariffs in this fashion uh, is really not, a, not a, a feasible strategy, and it's going to be very much uh, opposed up here on Capitol yeah. Hill by Trump's Republican colleagues. And they, and they are obviously very clear that they're opposing um, using tariffs in, in, in a non-economic war, right? I mean, it, it, it doesn't yes. fit with any sort of... Um, any kind of policy that anybody would accept. However, the president, you know, points to these, the, the, the illegal uh, immigrants that have been surging over the border, right? 144,000, according to Customs and Border Protection, uh, encountered or arrested at the U.S.-Mexico border in May. And as I said, that's up about a third it, just since April. Yes. So, so do you blame him for that? Or is, is what he's doing by forcing the issue, you're forcing people to come and deal with this bigger problem? I mean, it, isn't he right that this is a problem? Well, it certainly is a very high flow that's coming and instigated by President Trump. In other words, he's created this problem, and now he doesn't know what to do about it. So he's threatening Mexico, but Mexico can't stop people from but moving around just, the country. But just to understand, I'm trying to understand your logic. Why do you think it's his fault? I mean, it's a, he's certainly not making it feel welcoming to come here, right? So... Yes. If we go back and track the numbers on the flow of immigrants from the roughly 30 to 40,000 that were coming per, per month, when it started surging, it started surging with the declaration of a national emergency and President Trump starting to talk about sealing the border. There were then the, the coyotes who advertised for clients said, OK, if you want to go, right. you got to come now. But isn't all and that doing is pushing the numbers early because they think the border could close, so they're coming in now, right? I mean, you're not saying that the intent of who's coming wouldn't change, right? It's just when the numbers are happening, right? Well, it's hard to say. It's, it's, it's saying to a lot of people, if you've ever considered it, 
Now's the time you got to make a decision. Those people may never have decided to come in the first place under ordinary circumstances. Okay, so so let me ask you. You know, the New York Times had an interesting report today, or I'm sorry, it was on Monday about the Mexican government's response to the president's threats, and they pointed out there were some raids by Mexican military last week. You know, where they went into a hotel by the Guatemalan border to try to get you know, Guatemalans who were coming into Mexico to head to the United States to get them out. Uh, roadblocks 24-7, and they're breaking up some more uh, caravans. Do you think Mexico is moving and being more aggressive at taking on this problem because of Trump? Well, they have been making efforts uh, for much of the last year to try to figure out if there are ways to uh, encourage folks to stay in Central America, uh, to make crossing the border more difficult. Uh, but it's not an easy thing to do. They have been making these these efforts. They may be making more efforts now in response to this, uh, but it's not going to stop the flow. As long as you have this incredibly difficult uh, street extortion that has taken a grip throughout the, the Northern Triangle of Honduras, Guata, Guatemala, and El Salvador, uh, when people are being told, pay your extortion money now, or we will kill you tomorrow, or we will rape your daughter this weekend, uh, people are going to to flee. And so stabilizing those countries is going to be essential to change this dynamic. Look, Republicans have been vocal about this, that they're not okay with these tariffs. They're a bad idea. Senator Grassley, Senator Cornyn, many others. Okay, will they stand up to the president, though, when push comes to shove? I think the Republicans are going to stand up to him. They do not like the use of a national emergency. This is, an, this is certainly... The law was not written for a president to be able to use that clause uh, in order to bypass the, the period to Congress, uh, to give them 60 days, uh, well, to give an alert on, the, on now switching to Saudi to sales. That's the other piece that's happened simultaneously yeah. that's really all about an imperial presidency. And so the combination of the tariffs and the Saudi arms sales are really riling up uh, Republicans saying this is not right. The president's not allowed to act. This is not a, this is not a kingship. Right. This is not an imperial presidency. This is a democratic republic. Right. Of course, referring to the president trying to sell uh, arms to uh, Saudi Arabia without going through Congress for the approval, as uh, yes. would be the, the the normal procedure for for doing such a sale. Thank you so much, Senator. I appreciate your time. You're welcome, Aaron. Thank you.